Nebenstimmen. A podcast by Ensemble Modern. Nebenstimmen brings you conversations on music, art and life between ensemble members and conversation partners chosen by them. Find out what the musicians are working on at the moment and what their personal thoughts are. Bum, ba, bi, ba, ba, bum, ba. Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Sao Berger, horn player of Ensemble Modern. I welcome you to our new episode of the podcast Neben Stimmen by Ensemble Modern. And today, our special guest is the Slovenian composer Vito Juraj. Welcome, dear Vito, and Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much, Sar. It's my pleasure to be here. Dear Vito, so nice to have you here with us for this special Ensemble Modern podcast. It is my honor uh, to be able to talk to you about our musical adventures. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm very excited about this podcast because, you know, Vito, we know each other for quite some time now. From the time you were participating at Stipendiat at the International Ensemble Modern Academy in 2009, 2010, if I'm not wrong. And this was our starting point of getting to know each other. Your fantastic collaboration with Ensemble Modern Academy, Ensemble Modern, of course, and our close collaboration as well that brought us to your horn concerto, Hokai. That was something special. I remember very well when we met for the first time back then. I was a young composer from Slovenia who tried to learn something new. And I loved and still love French horn very much. And you were the first person who really opened to me the whole history of the instrument and, let's say, the future of the instrument. Mm -hmm. And I always thought it would be so great to compose something special for you. And we had so, uh, we spent m much time together exploring the, the instrument. It's true. Yeah. And trying out many crazy sounds. And that way, my horn concerto Hawk Eye for you, Sar, was born. Yeah, and it was fun <laughs> and crazy at the same time. And um, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe we change a bit and we go to something very important. And and this is maybe for our our listeners. Um, maybe some short introduction about you, Vito. So Vito, of course, is a composer. He's a professor for composition at the Music Academy in Ljubljana. He is a tennis lover and a tennis player as well, what brings him very often to draw musical inspiration and musical lines from this sport. He uses his insight into certain game situation as a basic of constantly growing series of works with lots of fantastic composition, titles as well as Drop Shot, The French Open, Change Over, Warm up or quiet place. Dear Vito, do you remember the time? It's amazing when I'm thinking about it. 2023, we met each other 13 years ago. It's been a long time. And I, re I remember how little my tennis knowledge helped me uh, uh, when playing a table tennis to you. I remember that the brass player, uh, that, that the brass players of Ensemble Modern have a table tennis <laughs> in their room. Yeah. And they are playing every day. So when I joined occasionally, of course, I was beaten every time. <laughs> I think I just get better. I, I got better about 5%. Hmm. But I got much better in my knowledge about brass instruments and in generally how to, yeah, maybe create personal sounds on instrument after a close collaboration with the players. I understand my, my, myself as somebody who is inspired by musicians. Mm. Because musicians like you, Sar, play their instrument uh, for decades, uh, devoting time to explore the instrument, playing many existing literature and work with the composers every day. 
playing new pieces, you know, trying out. And so your fantastic CD was born, which very much impressed me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And I was lucky enough to really witness the process. Uh, you, you mentioned like 13 years. I mean, over a, a decade we were in contact, yeah. trying to yeah, bring the most unique sounds uh, out of your wonderful French horn. And, you know, this is supposed to be kind of heroic instrument during the centuries. We all know French horn from the movie sound tracks, but not all French horn music has to sound like that. And I, I have learned that from you and um, it, um, as well as from your colleagues from Ensemble Modern. And this is uh, like, it's changed my perception of music and then changed myself as a composer, being around with you and your wonderful colleagues from Ensemble Modern. I am very grateful for that time. Yeah. Thanks, Vito. But you know, it's funny because it's the same for us. You know, to work with composers, or like to work with you, you know, I know you for quite a long time now. And I'm sure my brass colleagues or my Assam modern colleagues will say the same. Um, because someone like you as a composer, as a musician, that comes to us, now we have like a ni nice try out together and we try things together. Um, what I found fantastic in Ensemble Modern, because we have always a fantastic process how to work together with composers before the piece came to like its last destination. And it's amazing. Sometimes, in many, I mean, not sometimes, I mean, I know for quite a while, many times you, you came to me with like very challenging horn part. Um, and I think what is, was so nice and still I found amazing and it's always adventure also for us as a player um, or as a players is that you need to practice and you need to find a way um, through this challenge, challenging excerpt. And of course, in the first time you say, you look at it and you say, oh my God, I'm going to do it. But it's amazing because we also learned not saying, no, it doesn't work, but we learned through this process to try the things and then to come to you back and say, yeah, yeah, it works. Oh, I have even a better idea. Maybe it is working even better. And I think we also learned. And I think this is, this is kind of like this relationship, um, something I, I found very unique and also what we had in the last 13 years. So it's, and I hope it will keep going the same way. Um, dear Vito, you know, we were sharing so many ideas about brass playing, external techniques, and luckily, lots of challenging composition, as I said before, of yours found a way to us, you know, with Ensemble Modern, as your runaround, you know, for our Ensemble Modern Brass team, quite pleased for our Savasa Ensemble Modern Brass Trio, um, the voice of Bataros for Horn and Ensemble, that you composed specially for the Ensemble Modern 40 years anniversary, and also its CD. And by the way, dear everyone, we are going to perform that piece together with two other pieces of Vito um, at the Happy New Year's Portrait Concert as one of the Ensemble Modern Concert Series col in collaboration with Opera Frankfurt and Frankfurt Music Hochschule. The concert will take place on the 24th of January at 7.30 in the evening at the Bockenheimer Depot in Frankfurt. So please join us. It's going to be fun. Dear Vito, what do you want to tell us about those pieces for the Happy New Year's concert in Bokenheim Depot? This is a um, portrait concert with three um, compositions of mine. You already mentioned uh, one of them. It is the voice of Bataros. It is a piece uh, which extends the material we developed for our horn concerto, Hawk Eye. Yeah. Voice of Bataros is a four minutes long piece for French horn solo and ensemble. And that piece could have many different titles. One of them could be as well like, you know, Donald Duck's Garden. <laughs> exactly, something <laughs> like that. This is a sound which really inspired me to draw uh, you know, musical sketches. 
Yeah. And we have experimented with the um, overtone series and playing with the modified stop uh, stop mute, exactly. which enables you to really yeah, make the French horn speak. Yeah. This is something of a your spe speciality, and I was uh, totally impressed. So that's the that's the piece, the voice of Bataros. Yeah, maybe to just again a short in information to our listeners. Um, the voice of Bataros is a very special sound. So it's of ensemble. Um, the sound is not something that you say you will say, oh, it's very familiar. Ah, this is a horn sound. Um, it will sound almost like a cartoon. Maybe even like you say, Dolan Duck. <laughs> and it's also maybe as, maybe I can explain once. So we have this mute, it's called stop mute. And this stop mute make this horn sound very in a way, funny. You can use it for Mahler 9, but you can also use it for... What do you think about that? Sound like a horn? I'm not sure. Vito? It does, it does. I Actually, uh, one of the first time we experimented you played something like that for me, improvising. And all what I was doing was just, you know, putting into notes, <laughs> uh, creating a rather complicated instrumental part, which you studied to perfection. And it's a piece which uh, very often makes listener smile. The other two pieces in concert um, are of very different origin. Mm -hmm. One of them, the new version of it, is going to be premiered. This is called Hors d'oeuvre. It's a work of pretty... It's, it's an unusual concept because there's a soloist which is a percussionist and the cook at the same time. And ensemble is uh, playing with him like in a concerto. The soloist is Daniel Gottschlich. Daniel is a two Michelin star chef in Cologne. Wow. Who is as well a drummer in a wow. band. So he has a excellent percussion technique. And I have visited his restaurant. He showed me his mastery in the, in the kitchen. Is he going to cook for us? Or we are going only to play with him. I very much hope this is going to cook. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. Yes. It would be maybe, maybe the first project. He can operate with taste, like a painter with color or a composer with sounds. Nice. And that inspired me to portray him in, in, in the piece Hors d'oeuvre, where he's actually playing on a drum set made of kitchen utensils, you know, pans, um, trash can, um, plate with spoons, you know, everything what you find in the kitchen. Fantastic. And then he changes to a table where he cuts vegetables and prepares an actual dish uh, during the course of the piece. He's going to do it in tempo? He's going to do it in tempo wow. and he's going to try not to cut off his fingers. The third piece in a concert uh, doesn't have uh, the uh, addition of a solo performer, but it's a ensemble piece, um, a little bit um, smaller instrumentation than the other two. It's called Tension. Tension, yeah. I was composing it for uh, Wittner Kammer Musiktage. And that piece contains many different um, sound illusions, like never-ending glissando, never-ending accelerando, mm. combining with some very subtle harp uh, sounds, 
and the differs a lot from the other two pieces. Great, fantastic. Dear Vito, I think it's about time that we share with our listeners another big project that's going to take place in Frankfurt from the 22nd of January until the 10th of February. Your new opera called Bluen, in English, Blossoming, commissioned by Frankfurt Opera and will be premiered by Ensemble Modern. We are definitely very excited about this and today, Vito, we had our first rehearsal of that piece. And you know, Vito, by the way, I didn't have time to tell you because we had six hour rehearsals and the part doesn't look so easy. Any indication? Would you be surprised to get an easy part after getting a horn concerto? I thought after 13 years you might change your mood to moderato. But I think it's... Uh, uh, two octaves range. <laughs> <laughs> lower range of your French horn. I know that you can play very much in the low range, but you actually are doubling the main theme of the uh, bass soloist. Yeah. So you are somehow exposed, but not nearly as hard as in the um, horn concerto. Yeah, of course. I mean, in this case, we have here, I mean, today after the six hour rehearsal, yeah, it was very intense. Um, the ensemble has lots to do. I think, I mean, at least myself and my brass colleagues, my neighbors, we have like around 50 six, 56 um, pages. Um, it's quite a lot. Um, but it was fun. It was fun today. We, had a, we have a lot to do regarding all the, the sound, you know, all the accent technique, different sound, mutes change very quick. Then we have all the natural harmonics. Um, Upper register, lower register, very quick, very slow. Um, it was fun, and we, I think we are looking forward for tomorrow rehearsals, also with the singers and the choir, whenever it comes, if it's tomorrow or not tomorrow. But I think now, after this six hours rehearsal, I'm, I'm, I'm really much, uh, I'm very curious about how it sounds with everything together. This is the same for me. I'm excited, I'm honored that I may let's say, produce my uh, first full-length opera with Ensemble Modern, which, uh, which I consider a kind of musical family. I, am, um, I was so lucky to be able to join the Ensemble Modern Academy back then and uh, getting the chance of working with this, with this special especially gifted musicians of Ensemble Modern and to really enrich my musical language. And the um, new operatic piece, Bluen, Blossoming in English, uh, is based on a libretto mm -hmm. by Händel Klaus. And as a base for his text, Klaus took the last novel of Thomas Mann, the German title is Die Betrogene. Mm -hmm. The English translation is The Black Swan. Nice. It's about a mother of two children who falls in love with a very much younger teacher of her son, the, the, the English teacher of, of, of her son. And thinking that she fell in love again very intensely at the age over 50, uh, having the impression he, she's becoming a girl again, at the height of the emotions, she realizes that she's terminally ill. Wow. She got cancer. And when Henry Klaus presented that topic to me, I was very excited because it's an unusual love story, but the dramatic potential I think is, uh, is, is very big and uh, I instantly heard the form, how the music should change after this, um, how say, s sinister realization. Hmm. And there are five uh, um, solo singers and the chamber choir of 12 singers as well, um, besides Ensemble Modern 
and I'm very excited that after six hours of rehearsal with Anselmo Modern, finally everybody's going to join together and bring my music to life. Wow. You have, maybe you can tell us a bit about um, your sound imagination, because there are lots of different colors in the piece. I mean, today we had, I mean, during the six hours we had us, um, of course, it was more like knowing the piece, learning, you know, studying the piece, and, and we had a very kind of a, um, kind of a very slow rehearsal and really going through through everything, you know, regarding and it was very kind of uh, also interesting for us because not only the notes, but the articulation, for example, the way it's supposed to sound, to speak, um, the, the, the perspective in the room, the sound perspective. So maybe you can tell us a bit about this because, I mean, first of all, of course, it sounds very, the piece in a way, very sad. I mean, the story is very sad. Um, but what, what was your kind of like imagination or like vision regarding the sound, the ensemble and the singers? Besides story, there are very complex um, characters of the five uh, roles in, in the piece. Mm. The main role is mezzo-soprano. It is uh, the mother of two with name Aurelia. She is a melancholic type of person who always looks back how nice it was before, hmm. how she enjoyed her childhood, and then transfers all these feelings to her new love, the tenor, Ken, the American soldier. Aurelia is German. And having a very melancholic person, I thought I would like to connect her to some, you know, some jazzy kind of sounds from the 40s, 50s, being represented by the saxophone mm -hmm. uh, vibrato in, in the piece. Uh, while the tenor is represented by, by guitar. Wow, okay. Uh, uh, something totally different and he sings um, not much, but what he does is kind of impress her with his tenor voice in, in, in um, nearly in an operatic manner. There's a very important role of a daughter of Aurelia. She's soprano, Anna, very complex character because she has clapped foot. Uh, she never found luck in love and she likes, of course, her mother, but she envies her because her mother, in his, uh, while being much, ol much older, he's experiencing uh, the highest love emotions, uh, while Anna hadn't had chance for that because of her yeah, disability. So Anna is not melancholic. She is very you know, straightforward mainly kickboxing with her with her voice some sometimes nice the brother of her edgar is the one who has been taught english by ken edgar is a very simple guy not particularly clever and has a minor role in in the piece speaking english like trying to learn english and then being kind of rattled why his mother is trying to seduce his teacher. And then the last but not least is the bass, Dr. Mutesius, the doctor who is a friend of Aurelia and tells her that she's terminally ill. Mm. He um, sings the last part of the opera. So there we have those five soloists connected to the choir of 12 singers which is represented in the libretto in the last scene there are seven pictures in the last picture but from picture one to seven the choir is singing in intermezzi between pictures 
uh, kind of preparing the atmosphere for the turnaround in the sixth picture. Wow. And what about us, about the ensemble? What, what is their, what, what is our role? I mean, you want us like, because yeah. it's not in your music, it's, I, I mean, I know it for quite a while, it's not always like kind of like a backstage or like, like a round about of like a sound that, um, um, not covering, but like, you know, it's, you always, you have a very strong role for the ensemble. I mean, we are quite busy most of the time. What was your vision there? For me, the role of ensemble is the equal to singers. Okay. It is not just like the, you know, we know the music from the 19th century, which was like that. Mm -hmm. I like to characterize the singers with many sounds from the, from the ensemble. Okay. Every, every singer has a particular instrument or group of instruments which define uh, the, the the singer like Aurelia has the connection to saxophone. Um, Ken has connection to the guitar. Yeah. Edgar has a connection to the accordion and bongos. Um, Anna is represented by the piano, and Doctor Mutesius is represented by the French horn. Sar, you know that <laughs> because you're playing those. Uh, um, lines of the of the bass beautifully in the low register. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> uh, unlike in the horn concerto, which <laughs> which you can remember, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so ensemble is actively participating in, it in exchanges between singers and connects energies which singers, um, yeah cannot project because the, the the palette of sounds and sounds which I learned from ensemble that they are they are infinitive possibilities yeah yeah dear Vito thank you very much for the short introduction about the opera we are so much looking forward for that 300 score pages of Bluen and for its musical adventures dear Vito I think I need to go now and go practice. Sir, but before we go, I mean, we were talking about uh, nearly an hour. So wouldn't it be nice to conclude our conversation with a little bit of music? Of? The voice of Bataros, the Donald Duck music. <laughs> To all of our listeners, we're wishing you a fantastic 2023 and always keep in mind that between a long note there is something like this. That was Nebenstimmen, a podcast by Ensemble Moderne.